What's up everybody, Trey Biddy with Hog Sports coming to you from Donald W. Reynolds Razorback Stadium. Auburn 48, Arkansas 10. Do you even care, did you finish the game? Because if you didn't, that's a problem. It's a big problem. I mean, we thought that maybe Arkansas had got some things figured out. Maybe they'd identified the problem after that Florida game. The way it went, 481 yards, 39 points. Well, they just came out and looked like the same crap that we saw against Mississippi State. Offense completely inept, no energy. Something goes wrong and they, it's just like you throw your hands up and the game's over. 21 points in an instant. And then from there, it's just like <laughs> nobody seemed to care. Half the stadium emptied out. 72,000 people in here. 72,033 was the official attendance that came to see the Razorbacks play because they had a little bit of inspiration, reason to get excited finally this season and just completely let down once again. I've got Arkansas in like games that are like meaningful since 2012, like games that, you know, against a ranked G5 or any Power 5 team, games that Arkansas fans cared about, including games that they lost to G5 teams. You got to include that. I've got them at 60 and 40 now, over 56 games. Every single one of them I've been to. There are fans in the stands that have been to every single one of those games, and it's not good enough. It's just not good enough. This is. This is Arkansas. This is the team that we got here. And just to get obliterated today by, you know, Hugh Freeze, who beat them last year with Liberty, to come in here and just annihilate Arkansas, a very average Auburn team. There's nothing special about that Auburn team. You want me to tell you about this offense? Peyton Thorne, you know, he's an all right quarterback. He's probably about 40th at his position when he was recruited. Um, a three-star recruit. Jarquez Hunter was a three-star recruit. Nothing, no big-time recruit. The offensive line that they've got out there, a true freshman center, um, a transfer from Tulsa, transfer from uh, Western Kentucky. I mean, a JUCO transfer. The tight end's a transfer from FIU. That's who came out here and just dominated Arkansas. And, you know, to this point, you know, the saving grace for Sam Pittman has been, well, nobody's just whipped them. You know, they lost six games by a total of 36 points, 6.0 points per loss. You know, they've just been unlucky. They hadn't been able to get things going on offense. The defense has been there battling. 36 total points. They lost this one by 38. They lost this game by 38 in front of these fans who came and showed up. And it would have been easy not to, but they did. They came and they showed up. It was a good crowd. And all the talk about you know, coming out here and doing something in front of these crowds and getting your respect back and just the opposite happened. The exact opposite happened in this one. Very disappointing. I had to ask Sam Pittman the tough question. I mean, I've got a job. Everybody knows I like Sam. He's a good guy and you wanted to work out for him. But I had to ask him the question if he's concerned about his job, which, you know, the answer is always going to be no, but the, you have to ask the question. And guys, I just don't know how you bounce back from, from this. I mean, with the season that they've had, being in year four, just a steady decline from, you know, when you had that nine win season. And, you know, Sam Pittman was exactly what they needed when he was hired. And you're pulling for the guy because you want him to be the guy. But you can't, you, he knows you gotta win. You have to win, you've gotta win. You can't just be in year four and put this product out there and I know there's a lot of people that be like, you know, wait till next year, and I get that too. And you hope, and you, you, you know, this was a big opportunity for him. And the one thing that you couldn't do was come out here and lose 48 to 10. <laughs> Arkansas running backs had 11 carries for like six yards today, guys. This offensive line is just terrible. They are. I'm, I mean, I, I never would have imagined they they would be the undoing for Sam Pittman, possibly. There's a couple of games left. How many people you think is going to come in here for a 6.30 game against FIU next week? Maybe these diehards that shut, stay. There was 20,000 people here that stuck around for the end of this thing. I'm not going to lie, I checked out. I checked out of this game. I know a lot of people are asking, why don't I just go that way? I've got to show you everything. We've got to talk, right? It's a walk and talk, not just hop in my car and be done. I don't know, guys. I, I'm pissed off. You know, I was thinking, like, this might be the walk and talk where I just let it fly. Just 
go on a cussing tirade. And then this little boy down here, I was talking to DJ Williams, and this little boy's like hollering me over, wants to take a picture with me, says he watches all my stuff. So we'll keep it PG. Man. I mean, it, like a lot of people are saying, like I could see the Twitter comments, people at me, like this is gonna be like Western Kentucky walk and talk. People were disappointed with my Florida walk and talk. They said I was too tepid, not enough energy. And it's because I wasn't just totally sure yet. I wanted to be sure. I've never walked out this entry. And I wanted to be sure, but I just wasn't. How's it going? How are you? I'm doing good. Well, no, not really. <laughs> how are you? How are we really doing? <laughs> oh, damn it. So, where do we go from here? FIU game. Nobody's going to really care about that. What do they do? What do, I mean, like, if we're going to just, like, talk, like, are we going to just have this conversation the rest of the walk and talk about, like, what they need to do? To close out this season strong i mean i'm as disappointed as anything because we get to put a big bow on this whole thing uh with the missouri game they're going to just come out and beat missouri and i wish they would but i mean it just it this has just very much the feel of just a start over and I don't know that that's an ideal situation. It's, I know it's not. I know it's not an ideal situation. What Arkansas needed to happen was for this team to rally around Pittman and battle for him and pull out this win. This roster's not that damn bad. They're just not. The offensive line's not good, okay? They're not good. They gotta figure out ways to get around that. They, I felt like they did that against Florida, but how, how bad is Florida? How bad is their defense? Like this LSU game's going on and I mean, is this going to be like 55 to 51 or something? One of those types of games? Because the only teams that Arkansas's offenses look good against are those two. I'm going to start, I'm going to like invent a pillow for everybody, and you can have a pillow that you can take to Razorbacks games and you can just scream into it because that's what I want to do right now. It's like a place to bite. Or scream into your pillow. You know, I brought this up, you know, like after after the Alabama game and Hunter Yurchek, you know, says this this team deserves a packed stadium, an electric crowd. What about these fans? What do they deserve? I mean, there's people here that came up here hours away, people from Dallas or Little Rock or whatever, and you know, you come up here, you pay two nights for an overpriced hotel room, you buy a bunch of tickets, and you've been doing it for literally, as I count, 55 games. 55 games that mattered. I'm not talking about, you know, just the, the you know, the FIUs and stuff like that. I'm talking about 55 games where people cared about, and there's 16 and 40 in them. 56 games now, 16 and 40. What would you do? Thanks for watching. Appreciate you. I hope the Dixie Chicks don't demonetize this. <laughs> I hope that's not coming over. So, basketball team looks pretty good. A little disappointing, a little sloppy play, but they'll be all right. Caleb battles a dog. Trevon Brazil, good to see him back from the ACL. Tremon Mark, it's not the prettiest jump shot you ever saw, but it goes in. Fun watching this basketball team. My Thanksgiving plans have opened up. So, Mom, we can, well, not Thanksgiving, but Christmas, excuse me. 
we can go ahead and plan Christmas. Usually Christmas is always just like, well, I gotta wait to see what the bowl situation is. So we can start planning Christmas. The one positive. This whole state deserves more and you know, like I said, Pittman was the right the right guy for the right time. I mean, brought a lot of energy, had all those super seniors coming back for that 2021 season. And it, it, you're right, you know, it was tough. It was tough starting out because of all the COVID restrictions that they had recruiting. You know, 2020, the COVID year, 2021, not able to do in-person recruiting and had a lot of misses. But, you know, with this portal and, and everything, you can build up a program pretty fast. And here's the deal, guys. Like, they screwed up the offensive line. They hired the wrong coordinator. This team has talent. I mean, we've seen this defense. This defense just doesn't suddenly, you know, they're just not suddenly just really, really bad. You know, there was a little bit of a let go of the rope here today. That Auburn team's not that good. I mean, they're better than Arkansas. There's a lot of teams better than Arkansas. I ain't saying much, is it? It was too perfect, wasn't it? It's just always like, you know, when it's, the weather's perfect, you step outside and it's 60 degrees and sunny and it's crisp and it feels good. Came in here, I felt like I was the last person into the elevator, last person to go through the red light or the green light before it turned yellow and red. Like, it, you know, get the good parking spot. It's like, ah, everything's perfect. And then just immediately you get this. So, what's up, brother? Thanks for watching. So, you know, When I asked Pibbin the question, you know, I had to say before I asked him, just, you know, I don't take any pleasure in that because he's been good to me. We have a good rapport. I mean, I've been sitting in the front row of his press conferences for the last four years. And it's, it's just, it's different, you know, because I've always liked the guy and I don't want bad things to happen, but also, I want this program to get back to being competitive and challenging people. You can do it. It can be done here. I've said that before. It can be done here, especially in this world of NIL. You have to get on board with all that, with the transfer portal. You have to get on board with all this stuff, but it can be done. And it's frustrating because I know it can be. When th th Thank you. Thanks for watching. A lot of, a lot of love out here today, but I know it can be done here, and it's not something that you should give up on. And it's disappointing as it is. You know, today I just kind of sat down there, field level after Pittman's press conference. I didn't even stay in there for the players. They only brought two guys in. And I just kind of sat there and stewed for a little bit and thought about it, you know, just like I do every once in a while. Hmm. It's been a long time since that Texas walk and talk. I don't know what else to say, but I, I got <laughs> Yeah, it just breaks your heart, doesn't it? Razorback football, deserve better. The whole state deserves better, the fan deserve better. It's a bunch of BS. No reason that they should have just got whipped 48-10 to that team. All right, everybody, that's it. Back to the car. Thank everybody for joining me. Go to hogsports.com for all our content. A lot of great basketball stuff from yesterday if you're done with football and I can understand that. Be an interesting couple of weeks, FIU, and round things out with Missouri. Don't you hate? Don't you hate Missouri a little bit more now? It's a good old-fashioned hate. 
All right, everybody, this has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com. We'll catch you next time.